people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. Adhering to her long-standing ethos of people above all, Indian teams are working around the clock to provide humanitarian assistance in earthquake devastated Turkey and Syria. While India is not the only country lending a helping hand to these nations, their proactive humanitarian operation holds special significance for it is being carried out despite Turkey's anti-India stances on several occasions. Operation Dost or Operation Friend is the epitome of humanity, an endeavor truly reflecting India's people-first policy. This is just one of many missions India has been involved in for the global good. Join us as we take a closer look at how Indian diplomacy is guided by the principles of humanity first and remains undeterred by the politics of polarization and ignorance. The Indian Air Force's C-17 Globemasters carrying ambulances, relief material, medicines and other essentials were dispatched within hours that the catastrophic series of earthquakes wreaked havoc in the two neighboring nations of Turkey and Syria. A strong contingent of doctors, rescue and relief teams, and coordinators comprised this mission, named Operation Dost. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said India would provide all possible assistance to the affected countries. The Indian team has been working overtime since it landed on the ground and has saved many who were either grievously injured or trapped in the rubble. In just days, several teams and tons of relief material have been airlifted to the devastated sites. The operation, according to Turkey's representative in India, was very important because it highlighted the two countries' friendship. Uh, operation Dost uh, is a very important operation and uh, this is the operation of friendship because Dost is a word in Hindi and Turkish which means friends and this operation shows our friendship between India and Turkey and friends always help each other. While the ambassador's statement was in line with the globally followed code of diplomatic courtesy, the ties between the two sides have been strained. Although the trade between the two countries has grown and expanded over time, this is not translated into a healthy political camaraderie. Turkey, despite knowledge of the history and politics surrounding Kashmir, has on several occasions gone against India and supported Pakistan, the haven and perpetuator of terrorism in the region. India, however, did not think even twice before sending teams of experts to the grieving nation. Given the nature of war and politics, countries often strike their challengers and enemies when they are at their weakest, but not India. India's ideals of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, the world is one family, are truly manifested in the policies and actions she has displayed while dealing with the world, including the current crisis. Locals in Turkey have heaped praise on Indian teams for being swift in their operations and for saving their lives. I hope that uh, it won't again and they will visit us in another matter, you know, like for visiting, for fun. I mean, this is my expectation. That's why I call them Dost. Now, actually, Dost is just a friend, but I see them like brothers and sisters. Few countries practice what they preach, but India is someone who believes in action. Whether it be by providing monetary assistance to Sri Lanka so it can secure an IMF loan, allocating billions of rupees to Afghans, providing multi-layered support to the archipelago nation of the Maldives, or by virtue of being a neighbor and all-weather friend to Nepal and Bhutan, India has never shied away from being the first responder in times of need. With the help of many friendly countries, things are improving. 
among all, we are very happy to say that India, from the very uh, moment, expressed the wish to be with Syria in this very hard time. India received unsolicited advice and criticism from some NATO nations for not towing their line with regards to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. These countries should take note of India's rapid and substantial relief efforts in Turkey and Syria. It is also important to remember that India did not engage in vaccine nationalism when some of the most developed countries stooped to the level of hoarding vaccines at the expense of the lives of others in underdeveloped parts of the world. India's diplomacy and decisions are never dictated by foreign pressures. She does what is in the larger interest of humanity. It is always the people who come first for India, not any form of politics. As Brand India approaches all of the world's challenges adhering to the motto of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, it is only humanity who will benefit. Moving on. In a massive shock to people's domestic budgets, the Sri Lankan government hiked electricity prices by 66% this week. The government said it was reluctant to take the call but had to do it in order to protect the long-term interests of the country. The global lender IMF has categorically asked Colombo to raise taxes, remove subsidies and ensure a debt restructuring system in order to ensure a 2.7 billion USD bailout plan. People, however, have raised strong objections to the government's call and said they were already reeling under unprecedented inflation and the electricity hike would only worsen the issue. Sri Lanka raised electricity prices by 66% this week in a move the government hopes will persuade the International Monetary Fund to provide a bailout for its crisis-stricken economy. The increase announced by Power and Energy Minister Kanchana Vijasekra comes after the government raised electricity prices by 75% last year and adds to the pain of Sri Lankans already struggling with inflation above 54% year-on-year in January and income taxes as high as 36%. මේ ක්‍රියාවලිය කරගෙන ආ යුතුයි කියන එක නෙවෙයි රජයේ හෝ අපේ මතය වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. නමුත් විකල්ප පිළිබඳව අපි අධ්‍යයනය කිරීමෙන් පසුව අපිට අවසාන වශයෙන් ගත හැකි අවසන් විකල්ප තීන්දුව හැටියට තමයි මේ තීරණයට අපිට එළඹීමට අකමැත්තෙන් වුණත් අපිට සිද්ධ වෙලා තියෙන්නේ. The government has said the price increase would help the power ministry offset the gap caused by the cessation of government subsidies from January and also help better manage long-term fuel contracts. In January, we have to say that 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 we මේ වන විට කිසිම මුදලක් ලැබෙන්නේ නැහැ මහා භාණ්ඩාගාරයේ හෝ මහා බැංකුවෙන් කවදාක් වත් එහෙම රුපියල් හෝ ලබා දීම නෙවෙයි ඔවුන්ගේ තියෙන නියාමන කටයුත්තක් නමුත් ඒක ලබා ගන්න පුළුවන්කමක් නැහැ Sri Lankans especially those who are at the bottom rung of the economic ladder have expressed deep concerns over the hike They said they would not be able to pay these charges as their income levels had already plummeted and a tariff hike in electricity would further exacerbate their problems. They even said that they were bearing the brunt of the government's mismanagement and its imprudent policies. The IMF agreed to loan Sri Lanka 2.9 billion US dollars in September to overcome its worst financial crisis in seven decades, but the deal comes with conditions that include raising taxes removing subsidies and cutting public sector debt. 
The government of President Ranil Vikrame Singhe, who took over after mass protests against economic mismanagement ousted his predecessor last year, desperately needs the funds and has been courting multilateral agencies for support since taking office in July. Moving on. Making up for the undesirable pace of growth in the decades post-independence, the government of India has been emphasizing the development of a robust sports culture in the country. While the government has been identifying budding talent at the school level through its massive Kelo India program, missions like the Target Olympic Podium Scheme are providing adequate facilities and remuneration to gifted athletes. No wonder India has shown remarkable growth in the results. From the cricket pitch to the Commonwealth Games and Olympics arenas, Indian flag is fluttering high. Have a look at how Indian sports culture is strengthening by the day. India, with a population over 1.4 billion, naturally has many extremely talented athletes. And India's athletes and athletics are getting a boost through a host of government initiatives. With an objective to tap the tremendous sports potential of the country and to provide a fresh impetus to the sports culture at a grassroots level, Kalo India program was launched in 2017 to 2018. The National Winter Games under the banner Kalo India were recently organized in Kashmir's Gulmarg in which over 1,500 athletes from 29 states participated in 11 sports events. ये हर साल हजारों खिलाड़ियों को यहाँ पर आने का अवसर मिलता है और अपनी प्रतिभा को अपने टैलेंट को दिखाने का अवसर मिलता है। ये जहाँ एक और कंपटीशन है हमें टैलेंट हंट करने का अवसर मिलता है। फिर इनमें से कई खिलाड़ियों को टॉप स्कीम में कईयों को खेलो इंडिया एक्रेडिटेड एकेडमीज वाली स्कीम में हम लोग इन्वॉल्व करते हैं। To provide better facilities to players and to nurture the budding talent into real metal prospects, India has been working on policies that can deliver results. From providing state-of-the-art sports infrastructure to raising remuneration for athletes, the government has endeavored to check all boxes that can lead to a healthy sports environment in the country. The Target Olympic Podium Scheme, or TOPS, was launched to offer financial assistance to athletes as they set out in pursuit of medals at the Olympics and other international sporting events. TOPS, along with Mission Olympic Cell, MOC, work together to support gifted athletes. My judo career started from the and now साई ने साई की सपोर्ट मिला है मुझे हर जगह बाहर ट्रेनिंग जाने में और कंपटीशन वगैरह जाने में और सब साई का ही मैं स्टार्टिंग से अभी तक मैं साई का ही सब सपोर्ट साई से मिला है टॉप्स ने वो सुविधाएं हमें प्राप्त करवाई जो कि पहले हमने कभी भी देखी नहीं थी जिसमें कि वो मंथली फिफ्टी थ वो हमसे कोऑर्डिनेट करती रहती थी, कांटेक्ट करती रहती थी कि किसी अगर सामान की जरूरत है, तो हमें समय से बताइए, सो डेट आपका वो हम फाइल तैयार करें और सेंक्शन करवा करके आपके पास में जल्दी से जल्दी पहुंचाएं। This year's budget outlay for the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports has been increased by 11 percent, as compared with financial year 2022 to 2023. 415 million USD, the highest ever allotment, has been allocated to the ministry. The government's consistent efforts have already delivered results. India is gradually heading towards becoming a standout performer on the global stage. India clinched 61 medals at the 2022 Commonwealth Games, including 22 golds, 16 silvers and 23 bronze medals. India is already a force to be reckoned with as far as the sport of cricket is concerned. Despite being run by a non-government entity, the Board of Control for Cricket in India. Cricketers have been winning honours for the country for the past four decades. Indian cricket recently added another sports accomplishment to India's sports resume by winning the inaugural Under-19 Women's T20 World Cup. Along with mainstream sports, India is also promoting indigenous sports including Malakam, Kalari Payatu, Gatka, Tongta, Yogasana and Salambang. Some of these sports were featured in the Kalo India Youth Games held in Madhya Pradesh.
Taking a page out of the central government's book, various state governments have also taken steps to promote and support athletics. Aiming high, the Odisha government established a new mecca of Indian hockey, Bursa Munda International Hockey Stadium in Rorkela, which is the world's largest all-seater hockey stadium with a capacity of over 20,000. Indian athletes have a burning desire to compete, excel, and bring glory for the nation. The government's push will allow Indian athletes to excel at global competitions and further promote brand India to the world. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Israel passed a law this week that would allow authorities to strip people who have been jailed of citizenship or residency if they receive Palestinian funds for actions deemed as terrorism as rising violence has stoked fears of escalation. Israel calls stipends for militants and their families a pay-for-slay policy that encourages violence. Palestinians hail the prisoners as heroes in a struggle against decades of occupation and deserving of support. Following months of deadly Israeli raids against militants in West Bank and fatal Palestinian street attacks on Israelis, the law passed by 94 votes to 10 by a coalition of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and many opposition lawmakers in a rare moment of political unity. Under the new law, Palestinians from East Jerusalem who directly or through their families receive stipends from the Palestinian Authority after having been jailed in Israel for security offenses can be deported to the Palestinian territories. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has broken ground on a large greenhouse project and the development of 10,000 apartments, according to a video released by state-run television KRT this week, highlighting the construction projects amid foreign suspicion of food shortages. The North state-run KCNA news agency in its report cited an official who said the greenhouse construction would be a model for overcoming present difficulties. Neighboring South Korea said a food crisis appeared to be worsening in the North and the South's Dong A Evo newspaper reported that North Korea had cut rations to soldiers for the first time in more than two decades. North Korea has not confirmed any food shortages but its ruling party has scheduled a meeting for late February for what state media said was the very important and urgent task to establish the correct strategy for the development of agriculture. Hokkaido in Japan is a sight to behold in winters. It gets covered in a heavy blanket of snow. Despite heavy snowfall, ANA or All Nippon Airways make sure that flights are not delayed. Tourism is slowly reviving in Japan. Many tourists visit Hokkaido in winter. Popular Japanese YouTuber Kimono Mom has recently joined the winter Hokkaido tour. ANA organizes ANA Akindo or Merchant to promote inbound tourism and accelerate Japanese economy. After a one-hour car drive, the Kiroro Resort welcomes many skiers from Asia, Pacific, USA and Europe for a grand skiing experience. Kimono mom and her family enjoyed playing in the snow. All Nippon Airways is playing a vital role in providing the best of its services to tourists coming to Japan. Setsubun in Japanese means change of season from winter to spring. And to mark the occasion, an event named Sutsuvan was recently held at Zojo Temple in Tokyo. Participants shouted, Ogre is going outside and happiness comes to us. They threw roasted soybeans. Its performance is believed to exterminate Ogre. <laughs> え、鬼というのは悪いものの象徴でございまして、ただそれが何かというと自分の中にある悪い気持ち、それを外に出すというのが鬼場外。そして、福は内は幸福の幸せを福を自分の中に取り入れるという気持ちを込めての豆まきです
at Zojo Temple, kindergartners are invited to the event every year. Children have a good time throwing beans to Ogre. The bean throwers are people born in the same year as this year's Chinese Zodiac, public entertainer and sumo wrestlers. In addition, they throw snacks, rice cakes and lucky lotteries at the event. Many people gather to pick it up. The traditional Japanese event, Setsubun, is all about wishing for peace and happiness in the lives of people. Moving on, India and Nepal share a rich cultural heritage and religious celebrations are a part of it. Nepal's Pashupatinath temple draws thousands of devotees from around the world. The atmosphere around the temple becomes even more pious and vibrant in the run-up to the grandeur of Mahashivratri festival, the festival for the Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva. This year too, the temple welcomed thousands of them from different corners of the world, primarily from India and Nepal. Let's have a closer look. Pashupatinath Temple, located in the Himalayan, Nepal's capital Kathmandu, is a highly revered Hindu pilgrimage site. A number of small, pagoda-type temples, confining the Hindu heritage of Pashupatinath, also draw tourists and devotees from around the world. While the religious significance of the Pashupatinath Temple is accounted in Hindu scriptures and other holy books, it is also home to some of the largest gatherings the country witnesses every year. Consistent efforts have been made to provide a facelift to the temple, which is greatly adding to its beauty. Tens of thousands devotees gather every year from Nepal and India to mark the festival of Mahashivratri, a festival dedicated to Hindu god of destruction, Lord Shiva. I have a very different way of doing this. I have a very different way of doing this. I have a very different way of doing this. of have a very different way of doing this. I at Pashupatinath, century-old Hindu rituals are practiced in their most organic form, providing devotees an opportunity to feel the unique spirit of Hinduism. Shiva Bhagwan ki naam mane abhwanai ne uta porvo, ani the Ramayan lo kulagi ani abesko history aru ki thapau na sakin sa sadhu santa aru bata pani theo thapau na kulagi nee aunni gori kuchu theo. Mahashivratri is an ebullient night-long festival which celebrates grace of Lord Shiva. The planetary placement of this night, the darkest night of the year, is such that there is a powerful natural flow of cosmic energy in the human system. That's why this night is crucial for Hindus. While some devotees are seen engaged entirely in the devotion towards God, others can be seen enjoying the festive revelry side of the festival. The festival brings together people from all walks of life at one place and is a unique at several levels. Pashupatinath is one of the most sacred and revered places in Hinduism. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.